things are not looking good at Ubisoft. Their stock price long on the slide is dipping significantly and this is probably due to a quite long and brutal letter from one of their investors, Slovakian hedge fund manager AJ Investments. So let's look at what's going on, consider what might happen next and how it could have a longer term effect on the gaming industry. And this is primarily a Nintendo channel so we will consider whether the same sorts of issues could affect Nintendo and how instability at Ubisoft may affect the big N. So first of all, let's recap who Ubisoft are because the company has had a somewhat unusual backstory. It was founded in 1986 by five brothers in the Guillermo family and named Ubisoft to reflect their aspirations to create ubiquitous software. The Guillermo brothers themselves had quite an early history, starting by offering their support to their parents' farming business before gradually diversifying and finding their way into computer hardware distribution and then finally into video game software. They based themselves first in Paris and then in a chateau in Brittany, but it was really Rayman that rocketed their fortunes and led them to becoming not just a developer, but a distributor. By 1993, they were the largest video game distributor in France. They went public in 1996 and expanded at a stunning pace with studios in Ansi, Shanghai, Montreal and Milan following. Their iconic Swirl logo was launched in 2003 and they added new properties progressively to their portfolio, both ones they purchased and ones they created, such as Assassin's Creed. By 2019, they had more than 15,000 developers worldwide. However, a few things have been changing backstage. First, there were a series of allegations of misconduct and poor behaviour, which led to several senior people being fired or quitting. However, a major player in the video game scene of recent years was about to take a big interest in the Rabbids developers, Tencent. Tencent is a Chinese multinational technology company and is absolutely huge. Its current market capitalization in US dollars is about 450 billion compared to Nintendo's roughly 70 billion dollars and it has been on a spending spree over the last decade or so. Epic Games of Fortnite fame, League of Legends head honchos Riot Games, Elden Rings from software and many, many, many more. And so in 2022, Tencent bought its way into Ubisoft, but it did it in two ways. Firstly, they increased their direct stake from the 4.5% they already had to 9.99% of capital and voting rights, with the condition that Tencent could not share its sales for five years and could not increase its stake beyond 9.9% for eight years. But they also took another tack. Remember how I said the Guillermo brothers were in farming equipment, computer hardware, and other operations? Well, their own company, Guillermo Brothers Limited, owns shares in Ubisoft, 13.88%. So, Tencent secured a 49.9% economic stake and a 5% voting rights stake in Guillermo Brothers Limited. That doesn't affect the Guillermo Brothers as it stands. They have exclusive voting rights in Ubisoft and Tencent doesn't even have a seat on the Guillermo Brothers Limited's board of directors. Reassuring employees at the time, Ease Guillermo said, Tencent is not taking a seat on the board of directors of Ubisoft, nor Guillermo Brothers, nor becoming involved in our decisions or day-to-day -day operations. Tencent has a reputation as a constructive shareholder that already supports many other leading video game creators in the same way. Our strategy and creative choices remain our own, and Ubisoft's success continues to depend on all of us joining in together to focus on our objectives and the many opportunities in front of us. But as we know, things have not gone well for Ubisoft in the years since, with an exodus of top talent such as the marvellous Mario Plus Rabbids director Davide Soliani, strikes over failed salary negotiations amid general signs of discontent, and the failure of their so-called quadruple-A titles to make a sales impact proportionate to their uh, alphabetic aggregate. Small wonder their stocks is sliding, but let's welcome to the stage AJ Investors. If you haven't heard of AJ Investors, don't panic, because they are not a major Ubisoft investor, reportedly owning less than 1% of Ubisoft. This is not going to be the et tu brute moment for the Guillermo brothers. Then again, 
even a stray pebble in the right place can lead to an avalanche, so we shouldn't overlook the importance of these demands either. They say, as a significant minority shareholder in Ubisoft Entertainment via AJ Investments and our partners, we are writing to express our deep dissatisfaction with the current performance and strategic direction of the company. The recent quarterly results, which included the postponement of key games like Rainbow Six Siege and the division into the 2025 lineup and a lowered revenue outlook for the quarter two 2024 have heightened our concerns about the management's ability to deliver value to shareholders over the long term. Share price of Ubisoft have decreased by more than 40% over the last year compared to the rise of its competitors and indexes. Their call is for Ubisoft to either take the company private or to sell it. Basically, if a company goes private, then it is no longer publicly traded and the existing shareholders are generally given a decent payment for each share by way of compensation. In this case, it would either be private equity firms or the Guillermo brothers, who, remember, are heavily supported by Tencent, taking more direct control. The alternatives would be a sale, as they say, we are in discussion with investors to fight against the Guillermo family with so-called proxy fight at extraordinary shareholder meeting. They also gun directly for Eve Guillermo himself. Change of the current management, start hiring process of new CEO who will optimize the cost and studio structure for more agile and competitive company as Ubisoft should be. Finally, AJ Investment warns, we will use the French minority law to collect enough shareholders to start proxy fight and initiate sale process of Ubisoft to increase shareholder value for all shareholders. What follows is a rather bizarre letter which veers between market analysis and game review. Prince of Persia Lost Crown was okay, it generously opines, but not impressive as nobody talks about the game anymore. Rainbow Siege is doing great. Nevertheless, franchises such as Rayman, Splinter Cell, For Honor, Watch Dogs are sleeping for years despite these games are loved by millions of players all around the world. While fans often agitate for classic franchises to return, I for one wouldn't mind another Advance Wars if you're asking please Nintendo. The extent to which corporations such as Ubisoft and Nintendo can capitalise on their long-standing franchises is highly relevant to financial markets. By way of contrast to Ubisoft, Nintendo has generally struck a pretty good balance on this. Yes, their games may take a very long time and franchises have a habit of long dormant periods, but generally speaking, their major franchises will recur again and again with quality titles. And particularly on the Switch, we have seen a regular cadence of revivals of past IPs, such as Famicom Detective Clubs, Advance Wars, Another Code, and more. It has sometimes been said that Nintendo is primarily an intellectual property company, but they balance themselves with quite a few irons in the fire, including their work as a console manufacturer and publisher. For Ubisoft, though, the presence of so many seemingly lucrative franchises has actually opened them up to risk. As the Slovakian investors say, the ongoing underperformance of Ubisoft is a cause for concern, especially considering the potential Ubisoft has with its strong portfolio of intellectual properties, IPs, such as Assassin's Creed, Rainbow Six Siege, Far Cry, Tommy Clancy's, Star Wars, Avatar, and others. It is clear that the current management, led by the Guillermo family and supported by Tencent, has not been able to unlock this potential or provide satisfactory returns to minority shareholders, retail investors, and pension funds that are invested in Ubisoft. The bulk of the letter includes an accusation that the deal with Tencent and the Guillermo brothers has been made to prevent future acquisitions. The accusation is that the Guillermo brothers firm took a lot of money from Tencent when the value of their Ubisoft shares was high, and then when Ubisoft shares price dipped, they used this money to buy more shares in Ubisoft, consolidating their control over the company. Implicitly, they're not focusing on quality in the short term to help their own standing within the company. As the investors conclude, Guillermo family and Tencent owns more than 25% shares and 29.63% of voting rights of Ubisoft, as the table shows below, so minority shareholders own roughly 70% of the company. Based on our talks with other shareholders, we believe that we have enough voting power to challenge the Guillermos. They also train their fire on Ubisoft's cost structure and inefficiency. As they say, 
despite having fewer blockbuster titles, Ubisoft employs over 17,000 staff compared to EA's 11,000, Take-2's 7,500, and Activision Blizzard's 9,500. In terms of financial performance for the fiscal year 2023, EA reported revenues of approximately $7.43 billion, with a net profit of $1.58 billion. Take-Two Interactive reported revenues of $5.35 billion, with a net profit of $930 million, and Activision Blizzard, before its acquisition by Microsoft, reported revenues of $8.8 billion, with a net profit of $2.2 billion. In contrast, Ubisoft reported revenues of $2.4 billion, with a net loss of $60 million. The company needs to implement significant cost reductions and staff optimization to improve operational efficiency. We also suggest that Ubisoft should consider selling certain studios that are not needed for development of main IPs in the portfolio. Ubisoft has over 30 studios. It's obvious to every investor that this structure is too large for Ubisoft and its profitability going forward. The rest of the letter with its liberal use of bold text capitals and underlining continues in a similarly strident tone and i'll link to it in the notes but i think we get the picture so short term there is little danger to ubisoft or the Guillermos. they own a substantial chunk of ubisoft and aj investment is a tiny part of the makeup of the company although i dare say that defending themselves against this will prove a costly endeavor if nobody else gets a payday you can bet the lawyers will However, it speaks to the weakness of the company and the likelihood that it will need to extensively restructure anyway and perhaps slim down. The risk also is that it serves as a warning to potential game developers to steer clear and so Ubisoft may find it more difficult to recruit talent, which in turn will have further negative consequences for their ability to deliver quality games. Of course, this represents a long-term opportunity for Tencent, Tencent now have until 2030 before they are able, under the terms of their last purchase, to increase their ownership of Ubisoft. Meanwhile, they have a very substantial stake in the Guillermo brothers. But of course, Yves Guillermo is in his 60s and at a certain point, however committed he is to his business empire, he may not want to stick around forever like a Golic Logan Roy. Of course, he is not the only Guillermo brother. Kristen is only 54 and this has been a family business for a long time, going back to their time selling French farming equipment, so there are emotional reasons why they may want to maintain control. If the Guillermo brothers can get a grip, that's great for Ubisoft and good for Tencent. If they can't, there's a decent chance that Tencent will be well positioned to scoop up a few bargains in the early 2030s. But what of Nintendo? Surely this is just a local squabble a third of the way around the world that is of little interest to the Japanese giants. And that's mostly true, but I wonder. Ubisoft produces a vast amount of games for Nintendo systems, and in particular, they have worked directly with Nintendo to develop exclusives such as Zombie U and, of course, the Mario Plus Rabbids titles, both notably in the launch windows of new Nintendo consoles. Nintendo also published Just Dance in Japan, reconfiguring it to work with their market and therefore helping in the inception of one of Ubisoft's hugest franchises. Nintendo likes to cultivate relationships, and although these are slow to develop, they can be quite strong. Shigeru Miyamoto and Yves Guillermo clearly have this kind of relationship. Now, Nintendo doesn't rely on other corporations, and it's not the end of the world if they go their separate ways. Time was they work much more closely with Capcom, especially on the Zelda games, but now things are a little more distant, except of course for Monster Hunter Rise launching exclusive to Switch. They also have strong relationships with Tencent, who were their Chinese distributors for the Nintendo Switch. This video covers Nintendo's difficult relationship with the Chinese market and their attempts to crack the People's Republic over the years. Still, Tencent's economic power could be bolstered from the Chinese government, who in 2023 took a golden share in a subsidiary of Tencent. A small move, but indicative of the long-term aspiration for greater direct government control over the Chinese sector from the Chinese. And many Chinese studios are currently able to make very lucrative offers to top game devs. Yakuza producer Toshihiro Nagoshi went to NetEase, while the Zelda team's own Kentaro Tominaga went to Paper Games. Long-term Nintendo may feel that Tencent's control over Ubisoft 
is worth watching closely. In 2016, Tencent developed their own console, the Tencent Gaming Platform or the Blade, and their interest in bringing the Switch to China shows they see value in game console development still. If Tencent can continue to move up intellectual properties such as the many big franchises at Ubisoft, they have a much stronger base for entering the video game console market than, say, Sony had back in the 90s, and given China's incredible manufacturing capacity, they would have many potential advantages over Nintendo if they did decide to enter the console space in a big way. Of course, all of this is highly speculative and definitely for the future. For now, I suspect that Ubisoft will plod along and hope that its new suite of games can revive its fortunes. It wouldn't surprise me at all if there are at least one or two exclusive titles for the new Nintendo system in the manner of Zombie U or Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle within the first two years of the new system's launch. And since Nintendo's lower spec consoles potentially allow them to create games with smaller budgets that could after all always be upscaled for broader release later on, Ubisoft has every reason to continue their partnership with Nintendo for as long as they can. For my own part, I will admit that I don't play much of Ubisoft and I really focus mostly on Nintendo, so I would be interested to hear views from people who have been following the company's output more closely over the years. Also check out these videos hoving into view on the screen right now for more on the video game industry at large. Thanks as ever to my Patreon supporters, and I will see you next time for another Nintendo Forecast.